Simon says subscribe and click on the bell icon to receive notifications. Hello and welcome to module 410 in our financial forecasting in Excel course. In this module, we will discuss how to forecast the shareholders' equity. Let me begin by explaining what shareholders' equity actually is. As you can see, shareholders' equity is reported on the balance sheet. For corporations, shareholders' equity, also referred to as stockholders' equity, is the corporation's owner's residual claim on assets after debts have been paid. Shareholders' equity is equal to the firm's total assets minus its total liabilities. It can either be negative or positive. If positive, the company has enough assets to cover its liabilities. If negative, the company's liabilities exceed its assets. If the shareholders' equity of a company remains negative for an extended period of time, this is considered balance sheet insolvency. The next step in our course is to look at the shareholders' equity schedule. This is the shareholders' equity schedule. The primary objective of this schedule is to project equity-related items like shareholders' equity, dividends, share buyback, and option proceeds. In order to fill the first table and calculate the ending equity balance, we need to forecast share repurchase assumptions, new shares from exercised options, and dividend assumptions. We can start off by linking the EPS multiple from the income statement. EPS stands for earnings per share and it is net income divided by the diluted weighted average shares. fill in the rest of this table, let's go through ABC's share repurchase program note. ABC mentions that in March 2015, the BODs authorized a program to repurchase up to 5 billion of common stock by the end of 2016. Effective January 2016, our board of directors increased the authorization to repurchase up to an additional 4 billion of our common stock or an aggregate total of 9 billion by the end of 2017. From 2021 through 2025, management will authorize an annual 4 billion plan to repurchase shares at an earnings per share multiple of 9.5 times. We also have the shares repurchased amounts and the number of shares per year. And we have the assumed EPS multiple, which is 9.5 times from 2021 through 2025. So let's use this information. We fill in the shares repurchased amount as per the note. And we have the amount repurchased as well coming from the note. So we can calculate the implied share price, which is the shares repurchased divided by the amount repurchased. To calculate the assumed current year EPS multiple, we divide the implied share price by the current year EPS. There were no share repurchases from 2018 through 2020, so this is all zero. And ABC will commit to buy 4 billion worth of shares from 21 through 25. And we also have the EPS multiple. Using the current year EPS and the current year EPS multiple, we arrive at the share price. Shares repurchased is the amount repurchased divided by the implied share price. Let's move on to the next section. In this section, we will forecast option proceeds. Think of option proceeds as the proceeds to ABC as part of its employee stock ownership plan. As a benefit to its employees, ABC provides stock at a lower price compared to the market. And when employees buy those stocks, ABC gets those option proceeds. 
We first link the historical options proceeds from the cash flow statement. For the rest of the section, let's first read the information provided by ABC. The note is called Exercised Options and Restricted Stock Units. Due to the exercise of options, the company issued 43.9 million, 39.8 million, and 42 million shares in 18, 19, and 20. So we have the amount of share issues historically. The company has issued 960, 860, and 880,000 of RSUs to employees in 2018, 2019, and 2020. As of December 2020, performance-based RSUs were 8.65 million with a vesting period of five years. So the new share issues comes directly from the note, 43.9, 39.8, and 42. So these are the new share issues. Generally speaking, the average strike price is the price at which the employees can buy ABC stock. We can calculate the average strike price by dividing the option proceeds by the new share issues. This is the average strike price. Let's take the average for the new share issue. It's 41.9. We apply that average for the future years. The average strike price is 13.6 and we apply that for the future years as well. And the option proceeds will then be the new share issues times the average strike price. The last step is to fill in the restricted stock units. RSUs are performance-based stock awards that ABC grants its employees. Using the information that ABC provided below, we have the historical RSU amounts and also ABC mentioned that as of December 2020, ABC will issue RSUs worth 8.65 million with a vesting period of five years. So the historical data comes from the note and then for the future, we'll simply divide the 8.65 million by five years to arrive at the RSU amount per year. The last section on this sheet is the dividend section. A dividend is a token reward paid to the shareholders for their investment in a company's equity and it usually originates from the company's net profits. While the major portion of the profits is kept within the company as retained earnings, the remainder can be allocated to the shareholders as a dividend. The dividends are reported on the cash flow statement. So we can link the dividends paid directly from the cash flow statement for the historical years. We can also link the net income directly from the income statement. Using these two figures, we can calculate the dividend payout ratios by dividing the total dividends paid by the net income. The average dividend payout is 38.3% and we can apply that percentage for the future years. To calculate the dividend paid per year, we need to multiply the dividend payout ratio by the net income. As a last step, we need to forecast the shares outstanding. But don't worry, we have already done all the hard work. It will be a quick calculation. Let's move to our shares outstanding tab. In the Shares Outstanding tab, let's first read the note from ABC. ABC says, as of December 2017, ABC had 1,500 million shares outstanding. We fill in the December 17 ending balance as per the note. This ending balance will be 2018's beginning balance. We can link the shares issued directly from the shareholders equity section. Shares repurchased also comes from shareholders' equity. We can now calculate the ending balance 
by adding these amounts together. So December 2018 is complete. So the ending 2018 balance becomes the 2019 beginning balance. And then now we can find the basic ending balance for 2019. And we follow the same approach for the rest of the years as well. We have calculated the basic shares outstanding balance. Now basic shares include the stock held by all shareholders while fully diluted shares are the total number of shares if the stock options of a company are exercised. We know that ABC has some RSUs and we need to factor that in the calculation to calculate the diluted shares. So the basic weighted shares come directly from the income statement. To these amounts, we add in the restricted stock units that we just calculated. And the diluted weighted shares is simply the addition of the basic weighted average shares plus the restricted stock unit. With that, we have forecasted the basic and the diluted weighted shares for ABC from 2021 through 2025. That concludes the current module. In this module, we calculated various components of shareholders' equity, such as ending equity balance, share repurchases, exercised options, and dividends. As a last step, we calculated the ending balances of shares outstanding. As a remark, please note that forecasting a shareholder's equity can get tricky. In this module, I tried to cover some of the most important aspects. If you are to forecast the shareholder's equity for a company, my advice to you would be to thoroughly go through the financial statements and understand the line items before starting. Hope to see you in the next module. Goodbye. This video is part of our full course on financial forecasting and modeling. To take a look at the course, click over there. If you're not a subscriber, click down below to subscribe so you get notified about similar videos we upload. And to see similar videos, click over there.